My name is Paul Tevis, and I'm here to teach you how to play Evil Hat Productions' new card game, Zeppelin Attack. Zeppelin Attack is a deck building game. In it, you play one of the evil masterminds from the Spirit of the Century setting. To win, you must build a powerful deck of Zeppelin cards, weapons, defenses and operatives, and then use these to fight your opponent's Zeppelins. The player who gets the most points from winning battles and acquiring valuable cards will win the game. First, we need to sort out the decks. Most of the cards that the players will buy during the game are called mercenary cards. There are five types of mercenary cards. Attack cards, defense cards, operative cards, attack zeppelins, and operative zeppelins. Sort these cards into five separate decks, shuffle each one, and place them face up in the middle of the table. To buy cards, players will have to spend a special kind of currency called fate points. These take the form of fate cards, which have their own deck. Deal each player one minor mission three value fate card and one major plot four value fate card. Then shuffle the rest of the fate cards to form a face down deck next to the mercenary cards. Then Give each player one of the start decks. Unlike a lot of deck building games, you start Zeppelin Attack with a rich mix of cards already in your deck. A flagship, two Zeppelins, two operative cards, three defense cards, four attack cards, and one experimental Zeppelin card. Each of the Mastermind start decks has unique cards, but they're all equal in power. All players put their experimental Zeppelin cards face up beside the mercenary card decks. These cards can be purchased later in the game. Then, each player puts their flagship face up on the table in front of them. This forms the start of their armada, a tableau of Zeppelin cards. Each player adds their starting fate cards to their start decks, shuffles, and places their deck face down on the left of their flagship card. Each player draws a hand of five cards from their deck. Choose a start player, and now we're ready to start playing. Let me briefly explain what a deck building game is. Each player has their own personal deck of cards. At the beginning of the game, this is just the cards in your start deck. You add new cards to your deck and remove some cards from it throughout the game. Whenever you need to add cards to your hand, they come from your face-down draw deck. Whenever you need to discard cards, they go to your own personal discard pile, which is kept face up. Anytime you need to draw cards, and your draw deck has no cards left in it, you shuffle your discard pile, turn it face down to become your new draw deck, and then continue drawing your cards. This mechanic is what makes the game a deck building game. Each player turn is made up of three phases. In the action phase, players can take as many actions as the cards in their hands will enable them to take. As an action, a player can either launch a zeppelin, or play an action card on a zeppelin or their flagship. If a player has zeppelin cards in her hands, she may launch them by playing them face up onto her armada beside her flagship. You can use newly launched zeppelins immediately. Let's take a quick look at the features of a zeppelin card. The Rasputin's Vengeance is a mercenary attack zeppelin. It has an attack capacity and a defense capacity. This icon shows how many victory points the zeppelin is worth at the end of the game. The cost and fate points to buy the card is shown here. Action cards represent the crew, defense systems, and weapons carried by your zeppelins. To gain their effects, Action cards must be played onto a Zeppelin or flagship. Zeppelins and flagships have capacity numbers, which allow action cards of particular types, attack, defense, and operative, to be played upon them. An action card can only be played on a Zeppelin or flagship, which has the capacity for that specific type of card. During the player's turn, each Zeppelin or flagship can only be used to launch one action card. The action card is placed on top of the Zeppelin or flagship to mark that it has been used, and left there until the discard and cleanup phase. A flagship cannot be used to play an action card whose payload number exceeds the flagship's relevant capacity number. 
For example, a flagship with an attack capacity of 2 could never be used to launch a Payload 3 attack card. Zeppelins can be used to play action cards that exceed their capacity numbers. However, Zeppelins which are overloaded in this way will retreat during the discard phase of the turn. That is to say, they will be removed from the player's armada and placed in the player's discard pile. A Zeppelin which retreats may be launched again whenever it comes back to the player's hand. Now let's take a look at each type of action card. Insanity Ray is an example of a mercenary attack card. You can see here that it is an attack card, as well as an indication of the type of attack it is. There are four types of attacks and defenses. Electric, Explosive, Psionic, and Cold. This number is the payload value of the attack. This shows the cost to purchase the card, and this icon shows how many victory points the card is worth at the end of the game. Attack cards can have two kinds of text effects. This icon means that the first effect is an attack effect, which only occurs if the card is used to make a successful attack. This icon means that the second effect is a general effect, which occurs whether the attack is successful or whether it is blocked by a defense card. When an attack card is played, the attacking player must name a specific zeppelin or flagship in the armada of another player to attack. The attacking player places her attack card face up on her attacking zeppelin, announces what type of attack the attack card is, electric, explosive, psionic, or cold, and indicates the zeppelin or flagship she is attacking in the target's armada. If a flagship is targeted by an attack, then the targeted player immediately draws one card. The target then has a chance to play a defense card on the targeted zeppelin or flagship to block the attack. She can only do this if she has a defense card in her hand which can block the specific type of attack being made. Let's take a look at a defense card. Ice Field is a defense card from Jacqueline Frost's start deck. It has a payload value of 2 and can block either psionic or explosive attacks. This icon indicates that the first text effect is a defense effect. This effect only occurs when the card is played to block an enemy attack. The second effect on the defense card is a general effect, which occurs whether the card is played to block an attack during another player's turn, or whether the player uses the card on her own turn. A player is only allowed to play a card in defense if it matches the type of attack. A matching defense automatically blocks the attack. When the attack is blocked, the player first enacts the defense effect of her defense card, including any effects which impact the attacker, and then enacts the general effect of the card. The played defense card is then discarded. If the payload value of the defense card exceeded the defense capacity of the defending zeppelin, then the defending zeppelin must immediately retreat. Because the attack was blocked, the attacking player does not get to enact the attack effect of her attack card. However, she is still able to enact the general effect of her attack card. Defense cards may also be played by the active player during her own turn. In this case, only the general effect of the card is enacted, not the defense effect. Anytime the target does not play a defense card, then the attack is successful. The defending zeppelin must retreat. When a flagship is attacked successfully, it does not retreat. Flagships are never removed from a player's tableau. The attacking player then collects one battle point. This is represented by the attacking player taking the top card from any mercenary deck and placing it face down underneath the flagship card. The player then enacts the attack effect, including any effects which impact the target, followed by the general effect of her attack card. If the payload of the attack card exceeded the attack capacity of the zeppelin it was played on, then that zeppelin will retreat later, during the player's discard phase. Operative cards only have general text effects. When an operative card is played, simply enact its text effect. Operative cards allow the player to acquire fate cards. Some enable players to draw several fate cards, and acquire only the highest or lowest of the drawn cards. Operative cards 
may cause players to add fate cards to their hand, the top of their deck, or to their discard pile, depending on the text effect. Fate points are the currency of the game. Fate points can be used to buy mercenary cards for your deck. Fate cards are acquired as the result of card effects during the turn, primarily through the use of operative cards. All fate cards have a fate point value on them, which can range from 2 to 5. Some fate cards also have fate effects. These are text effects that are immediately enacted when the fate card is acquired by a player. Fate effects can be positive or negative, but usually impact all players. When a player has finished taking actions for the turn, she moves into the buying cards phase. She may now buy cards from the mercenary decks. Each player also has a powerful and expensive experimental Zeppelin card, which can only be purchased by that player. Players make purchases by playing fate cards from their hands. Fate cards are not acquired permanently. Spent fate cards are removed from the player's deck and returned to the fate discard pile. Some action cards also have ongoing effects that are enacted in the buying cards phase, such as discounts. The active player may buy as many cards as she can afford. The active player may divide her total pool of fate points from fate cards and discounts to make multiple purchases, but she cannot get change back for unspent fate points. Purchase Zeppelin and action cards are placed in the player's hand. Whenever an action card is bought, the active player may purge one action card from her hand or discard pile by placing the purged card underneath her flagship card. This is the only way that action cards are ever removed from a player's deck. You will want to use purging to remove weaker cards from your start deck once you have acquired more powerful cards to replace them. Zeppelins can never be purged from your deck. Each purged card counts as one battle point at the end of the game. The active player now moves all played action cards from the zeppelins and flagships in her armada to her discard pile. If any zeppelin's capacity was exceeded by the payload of the action card that was played on it, then those overloaded zeppelins retreat and are placed in the player's discard pile. The active player may choose to discard or retain any cards left in her hand at the end of the turn, but she must discard down to a hand of five cards if she has more than five cards left in her hand at the end of her turn. After discarding, if she has fewer than five cards in her hand, she must draw her hand up to five cards. The player's turn is now over, and the next player to the left becomes the active player. The game end is triggered when three mercenary decks have been exhausted. Play then continues back to the start player, so that the player to the start player's right always takes the final turn of the game. Players now tally their scores. Players first check to see who among them has the most unspent fate points left in their deck. The player with the most fate points gets a bonus of three victory points. If two or more players tie for the most fate points, then all the tied players receive one victory point. Next, players count their battle points. These are the face-down cards tucked underneath their flagship. These are worth one victory point each. Any action cards and zeppelins acquired during the game are worth the number of victory points indicated on those cards. Any cards left from your start deck are not worth any victory points. The player with the most victory points wins the game. If there is a tie for the most victory points, then the tied player with the most battle points wins the game. If there is still a tie, then the tied player with the most Zeppelin cards wins. Thanks a lot for watching, and keep watching the skies.